welcome to Bennett's Bike Social. My name's Simon, welcome to sunny Portugal, and a bit of a building site if you can hear that, and welcome to the launch of Honda's 2024 Africa Twin Adventure Sports. Welcome to the first few miles here in Portugal on Honda's 2024 Africa Twin Adventure Sports. Now as usual uh, I'm going to uh, quickly run through a little bit of potty history, not take too long over it because I suspect we're going to be riding a little bit enthusiastically so my, uh, my attention span might be diverted. Uh, and then I'll talk about the engine spec and the price and then I'll tell you about how it feels to ride and its price relative to its rivals and its trim levels uh, later on after we've done this super twisty stuff. Anyway, right, quick point history. 2018, Africa, uh, 2016 even, Africa Twin, 998 cc, 94 horsepower, uh, relaunched after the old V-twin of the 80s and 90s and uh, hit a sweet spot straight away. More agile than the R1200 GS, so it's kind of more off-roady. More substantial and beefy than the F800 GS, and more off-roady, really, than Triumph's Tiger 800s at the time. So it was kind of in a, a nice place. In 2018, Honda introduced the Af uh, Adventure Sports version with a 24-litre tank, a much taller suspension and a much bigger seat height. It was 900 mil at minimum, um, which is pretty exclusive. Really six foot six Vikings only need apply. Uh, and it's, to be honest, it was a little bit confused because you kind of thought, okay, so Honda are trying to turn this into their Africa Twin GSA, if you like. On the one hand, you've got a bigger tank, which is better for road riding, better for touring, more mileage. But it also, uh, you know, they offer, you know, they've made it on sort of longer travel suspension and a taller seat height, and kind of said it's more off-roady as well, more ground clearance, all that kind of malarkey. So, what is it? Is it more of a tourer or is it more of an adventure bike? Didn't quite make sense, and I think Honda sort of felt the same thing because when they revamped the range in 2020 with the 1084 cc bigger bore, longer stroke, I think it was. I think it was longer stroke actually. Uh, engine making more horsepower. It went up to 101 bhp. Uh, the uh, the adventure sport sort of did become the more road orientated touring version. It kept the big tank, but they lowered the, uh, the ride height and the suspension and got it down to about 855 or 850 mil, which is a bit more conventional, slightly less exclusive. Sorry about the speed, I hope you can hear me over the wind noise. Um, at least the ride's quite interesting. <laughs> anyway, so here we are. At the same time, by the way, in 2020, of course, the uh, in Adventure Sport got a semi-active suspension option. Uh, I think it got DCT back in 2018, and there was that option as well. So uh, there were kind of like six models of Adventure Sport to dive into. Anyway, fast forward, here we are, 2024 and the new bike. And the changes are really quite simple to describe, but have quite a profound effect on the bike. I'll start with the engine. It's not the most significant change, but uh, I'll start somewhere. Still 1084cc. Still the 101 horsepower, still at 7,500 RPM. That's better, we can hear what we're saying now. Uh, but we've got more torque, more peak torque. It's up to 83 pound foot over 77 pound foot. Uh, but it's down from 6,250 RPM down to 5,500 RPM. So it's quite a lot lower in the rev range. Uh, Honda showed us a dyno graph the other night. Honda's claimed figures, obviously. And uh, it's got, uh, according to them, it's got a lot more power and up to 7% more power, I think, and more torque uh, in the mid-range, sort of like five, six, 7,000 RPM, which they say is sort of where we spend most of our time, which might be true, but I'm always a little bit distrustful of those kinds of quotes because it does remove an awful lot of nuance from the way people ride. But anyway, I know that the principle is we don't spend all our time at the red line uh, as a rule, anyway. 
Uh, in fact, actually, kind of, I mean, look at look at where we are now. How many revs are we pulling now? Two and a half, three, four. So this is where the bike has got more poke. Uh, how they've achieved it, um, again, it's pretty straightforward. They got longer, they helped the engine breathe better. It's a bit like Triumph did with their Tiger 900, which you can see the video for that describing the differences over on Bennett's Bike Social sister channel, uh, uh, Feck TV front end chatter type that into your YouTube thing and you can uh, watch the Tiger 900 video that uh, that had pretty much the same sort of changes to the top end so they were basically made the Honda made the engine breathe better longer intakes a freer flowing exhaust raise the compression ratio change the fueling and and to lesser extent the valve timing to suit um, what they haven't done is go for revs like Triumph have so we haven't got more power but we have got that extra torque uh, mostly achieved through the compression ratio rise, which uh, which interesting little detail if you're into this kind of stuff. It means a different piston. It's got it's 400 micro, uh, microns longer the skirts, uh, so it is a little bit heavier. Uh, whoa, we're a bit damp here. Let's go steady through that. Uh, and obviously it's uh, reprofiled slightly as well. And the interesting thing is that you look on a piece of paper and it says compression ratio has gone up a fraction. And you sort of think, oh, well, okay, new piston, that's it. No, but no. It means new con rods, they've rebalanced the crank. And not for extra set strength specifically, they were telling me, Honda engineers. Um, but just to balance, to keep the engine balanced. And it sort of shows the granular level of detail. You know, for us it's a little bit more compression ratio. But for Honda engineers, yeah, that's quite a lot of work. Anyway, um, and also the cam, the cam lobes, it's the same profile, they've actually moved the cam timing on the cam sprocket. So they've actually shifted, same overlap, same lift, same duration. Uh, they've just changed the, uh, the timing of it relative to the crank angle, which is uh, again sort of quite interesting and quite cheap, I guess, way of doing, uh, of getting extra torque. Hey, a bunch of people. Hey guys. So there we go, so that's the engine exhaustively uh, covered. Yeah, I was going to say, oh, the exhaust changes, yeah. It's a little bit louder, it's two decibels louder. Uh, and they've taken the flapper valve, the butterfly valve, out of the end can. Um, again, it's one of those things that they've done this and you sort of think, why didn't they do that to start off with? Because there's no new technology in any of this. It's not like they've discovered some magic formula. But, but anyway, that's product planning. That's a question for somebody else. Um, these roads in Portugal, eh? Wow, so good. That's uh, Alex up in front, the Honda lead test rider on uh, Africa Twin as well. Same one as this one. See his little uh, indicator lights flashing there as it's emergency brakes. Um, so right, okay, let's get on to the meat of the matter, which is, we've still got, well now semi-active is the only option for suspension for the uh, adventure sports. It's a bit damp in places. Whoa, that was close, Alex. Nice one. It's a pretty sweet move. Uh, bit of a better look. Yeah, I don't trust this. There's lots of damp bits here. Yeah, the meat of the matter, finally, is the uh, shorter travel suspension now. 20 mil off the uh, ooh, suspension travel. And we've got a 19 inch front wheel instead of a 21 inch front. And again, that sounds like quite a simple thing to say, but it has quite a profound effect. It lowers the bike by 20 mil which gives it a lower centre of gravity and the advantages on the road of a 19 inch front over a 21 inch front are fairly uh, fairly obvious really you get wider rubber you get a better choice of rubber you get a proper radial Honda even say you even get more air in the tyre <laughs> for uh, well, I guess for, for better sort of suspension I don't know uh, and also you get more stable steering you get more stable braking the bike doesn't wander around the headstock so much when you pin it on the brakes and it turns in with great stability as well it feels more planted in a kind of way, it feels more conventional, I guess. Now, I never rode the old Adventure Sport on the 21-inch front and complained about the... I never said, oh, I wish it had a 19-inch front. But you were aware that, that that's what you were dealing with and you rode the bike accordingly. As I've said before in other videos, you tend to adopt a point-and-squirt riding style where you fire the bike up to the apex, nail it on the brakes, get all the squirming and the braking done with the bike upright, then pitch it, sit it back on the rear suspension and gun it out. 
Whereas now, the riding that we've just been doing, you can see there's a lot more mid-corner speed. This bike holds the line much, much more easily. It, it is a little bit harder to steer. Not harder to steer is the wrong word. You can tell there's more weight at the front end. And indeed, that's where the five extra, the, uh, this bike weighs five kilos more than the previous model. And that's where much of it comes from. Just the sheer weight of the front end. Um, but it gives it a kind of a, a, a sports tourer feel. The way it rolls into corners, the lower centre of gravity just holds the turn. It isn't quite as flighty, it isn't quite as kind of like flick flack agile as a 21 inch front. Um, and it's now it's still on the Bridgestone, uh, what are they, Battleax A41s. But I mean, do you know what? They don't even look like a dual purpose tyre, it looks like a road tyre. End of. Um, other stuff has stayed much the same, so the frame is still the same, steel frame, still got detachable alley subframe, um, still got the aluminium swing arm, it's the same four pot radial calipers, same ABS systems, same electronics, six and a half inch TFT dash, still got, I don't know what, uh, one, two, three, four, five rider modes, um, two of which are customizable. You can now change the preload at standstill electronically on the dash, you don't have to go back to the hydraulic adjuster, so you push a little button and it whizzes up and down. Um, and you, you know you can't change the pre you can't change the, the suspension modes. I don't think while you're riding you just change the rider mode, and that changes your suspension mode between I don't know the hard and the soft and the medium. And obviously there are off-road modes as well. There's a gravel mode, and then a fully off-road mode that also uh, gives you the option to disable ABS. Um, so yeah, a host, a matrix of functions, and, and I'll flash the uh, I'll flash the screen up now with all those functions listed but I'll put it at the end of the video as well so you can have a longer look at it because there is a lot of stuff there. But it is all mostly the same as the previous model of Africa Twin, so it's kind of the same sort of stuff. Um, so what else have we done? So as a consequence of lowering the bike, obviously the seat height will be lower as well, but it's only 15 mil lower than before, not 20 mil, because it is five mil thicker. So again, a nod to the road orientation of the bike, a nod to touring. I've ridden this road a few times before. This road here, that corner there, nearly had a bit of an accident on a Tiger 1200, as I recall, a few years ago. Yeah, I'm not going to forget that in a hurry. Um, anyway, what was that about? Yes, yeah, so we got a, a lower seat, 15 mil lower. So it now brings the seat height down to, I think, 835, where it was 850. Uh, you can go down to 795 with a low seat option, which to me, 800 mil is kind of, I, 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 for some reason I think it's the median of seat heights for British riders, um, but the magic, it's the magic number, and if you get it under 800, suddenly the bike is accessible to a much, much wider range of riders, body types, I guess you'd say. Whoops, sorry, Doug. You alright, dude? Um... Yeah, so that's a, that's a good thing. And the seat is a little bit wider at the back, still narrow at the front, so the standover is still the same. You can still get both feet down quite easily. So, um, so it's a long way in the evolution of the adventure sports from a 900mm seat height down to a sub 800mm. Let's just stop here for a second. Um, OK, so there are all the basic changes. Let's have a quick word about the price. Alex is gorgeous, but you don't want to look at him. <laughs> um, quick word about the price. Uh, yes, now that is a little bit salty. £16,300 for the uh, standard Africa Twin Adventure Sports. Um, the DCT version, which I'll talk about DCT in a minute, is 17600 Is this chap crossing over? No, he's not. Um, which is also salty. But I'll talk about its rivals and I'll talk about where it sits in relation to that 16,300 uh, later on. Uh, but I will talk about quickly DCT. Yes, the DCT version with a revised uh, mechanism now. They've changed the way they measure the hydraulic uh, pressure. Uh, so it's more reflective, it's more accurate of, of what actually goes on. They say, it's quite funny, I mean, originally Honda UK said they weren't bringing any manual transmission Africa Twins in, um, uh, Africa Twin Adventure Sports, which was a bit of a shock because, I mean, the manual transmission still makes up something like, I don't know, at least 40, 45 percent of sales. So it's an awful lot of potentially uh, unhappy people if you just brought in the DCT version. Anyway, they're bringing both in, which is good. Um, 
And so, yeah, for you, what do you get for your extra 1,300 quid and your extra 10 kilos in weight? Um, I should, did I mention the weight? This is down five kilos heavier than the previous bike. Can't remember if I did, but anyway, most of that five kilos comes from the front end, the front wheel, extra weight. Anyway, uh, where was I? Yeah, DCT. So what do you get? Um, yeah, you get revised feel. It's, it's got a more natural uh, gear change mechanism, which um, it's actually in the Africa Twin. The DCT, I think, is the best application because it uses the six axis IMU this bike has to not change gear when the bike is leaning over because it knows. I think one of the criticisms of the NT 1100 DCT version is that it's uh, with its five axis IMU, it doesn't take lean angle into account. But um, but anyway, it did make me smile when I read the press release because it says, uh, I think it was, uh, it's been redesigned to give the bike DTT a more natural feel, which sort of made me chuckle because I thought, well, more natural compared to what? A manual transmission maybe? But I know there's a place for both as long as Honda remember. I don't know why they're so evangelical about it. I mean, they really do bang the drum and it's like, it's okay, we get it enough now just let the market decide what they want and if you sell 50 50 bring half in you know it's if you sold at 98 percent dct i'd understand it but they keep evangelizing as if they're trying to convince us of something it's like just let the mechanics and the bike speak for itself anyway um well there are a few damp patches here you want to go too ballistic so there we go right i am now i think i've covered everything if I haven't, leave a, a message down below. And don't worry, I'm only going to repeat myself in a few minutes time when we've had a bit more of a ride and uh, I'll sit down to have a proper think about the bike, how it feels now, how the engine changes feel, how the steering dynamic feels and, uh, and where it fits in the world. Uh, now it's got a 19 inch front wheel and a fairly significant price tag. That's been a fantastic half day riding Honda's 2024 Africa Twin Adventure Sports. I say half day because normally we record these pieces at the end of the day. But to be honest, the kind of riding that we've been doing and the amount of stuff we've done and the amount of changes that Honda have made to the bike, I'm good to go. I think I've already got a pretty good handle on how this bike feels and kind of where it fits in the world. So, Right, hopefully on that rather lengthy intro, you worked out all the, uh, all the spec and you know the changes, the 19 inch front wheel, the slightly fitter motor. Uh, unusually, Honda have provided uh, th at this lunch stop um, the previous model Africa Twin Adventure Sports to ride as a comparison. Manufacturers tend not to do that, so it's a bit unusual. And it's really, really glad they did because, ah, it, oh, it's an eye opener. It really is. It means you can compare the engines back to back, compare the handling back to back, but couple of other things that I've discovered that you can tell the difference. So anyway, the first thing is let's just talk about the new bike. So obviously the 19 inch front wheel is the domineering change. It gives the bike a real kind of sports tour of feel to its handling. Um, it is a little bit heavier steering. It's a bit more solid at the front when you turn that initial turn. The 21 inch front is kind of a flip flappy thing. But after that, you don't have to have that old riding style where you'd sort of point and squirt. You go in straight line, plant it on the brakes, get all the fork dive out of the way, get all the front wheels compressed and squashed, let it come back, then turn, hit the apex quick as possible, squirt out, sit in the bike back. It's a real point and squirt riding technique. This thing is like a road bike. It rolls into the corner like a sports tour. It has much more momentum, much more confidence in the front to trail brake the front in. None of that kind of, you know, worry about losing the front or the, you know, that, um, that kind of pattery feel you get as the forks are, kind of putting a distance between you and the front wheel and the tarmac. Um, it's got, so it's got much more feedback. It's much more intuitive, um, but it is steadier. It does not feel like an off-road bike. 
you kind of get the, you know, it's, it's, it's very multi ish in a way. It's sort of, uh, it's got all the look of the off-road stuff, but when you actually ride it on the road, it's a road bike, like the Tiger 900 GT Pro, same kind of vibe. Um, yeah, so, so that's a good thing. Suspension, show of suspension feels fantastic on this bike. Um, yeah, it's top class, the thing. But adjusting the preload at standstill is great. You can feel the back picking up. Really does change the riding dynamic too. You can really tell. You start to get just a little bit less flat-footed when you're sitting on it. Low seat height, again, because the bike is literally just dropped and then the seat is actually a little bit higher relative to the pegs, and the bars, you do have a little bit more of a canted over the front feel. Again, it's giving it that road bike vibe. I mean, I made a joke to someone that it's, a, it's an NT1100 in an off-road frock. Uh, it's not quite like that, but it's, it's getting close. It's, uh, yeah, it really does feel different. Now the engine, um, on its own, I wasn't sure whether I could actually tell a great deal of difference, but having just ridden the 2020 model, yeah, there's a big difference, but it's not just the engine. The first thing I noticed, and I checked the quick shifter settings, this bike is equipped with a quick shifter, it doesn't come as standard, it's a 300 quid accessory, but this fellow's got a quick shifter. The uh, 2020 bike that I just rode also has a quick shifter, and I checked the settings, because you can adjust the aggressiveness, if you like, is that a word, of the uh, quick shifter, and I checked they were both set up the same. Um, on the old bike, there's a really big lag. You hit the quick shifter, and the ignition is a really deep cut and it cuts for a long time. And then when the engine comes back in, it comes in with a bit of a lurch and you can physically feel it. You, you cannot prevent yourself just rocking backwards and forwards a little bit on the quick shifter. On this one, there's none of that. The, you get no body movement at all. It is seamless. As soon as it goes into gear, it's like the quick shifter time, the dwell time has been cut. So it's really short. It's not aggressive. It just makes the whole kind of gear change process a lot, lot smoother. Um, and this isn't something they told us at the technical briefing, but to ride the two back to back, you can tell they've changed that. And they have. They've changed the fuel injection strategy for the quick shifter. They've, well, they've, they've evolved it, they said, but it is different. Um, the other thing I could tell was that the, the new bike, this model, seemed to have a slightly firmer throttle to it. Whereas the old one, you jumped on it and, and, and it was, again, it's that kind of off-road vibe. You'd yeah, took off up the hill, up just up the road there and ba 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 sitting back, rocking bound. Every gear change was distinct. Come to a corner, ba ba turn, flop it on its side, ba fart out of the corner. This thing, it really liked throttle. This thing, because everything is more smoothed out, everything's more blended. Um, and the throttle is a little bit heavier, or it felt heavier to me anyway. Um, and so everything just seems a bit more calm, a bit more collected, a little bit less aggressive, a um, little bit less in your face, but a bit smoother and a bit more road orientated. It's exactly what they were trying to do. So I came back and asked the engineers, I said, have you changed the throttle spring? And they went, yeah, the throttle spring is stiffer in the new bike. It's not too stiff, it's not horrible. You can't, you've got cruise control if you get wrist ache, but it's not gonna give you wrist ache, it's fine. But it is different. And, uh, and again, it's another example of those tiny little granular details that, that they change, the factories will change, that changes the bike as a whole and give you a completely different impression of it because it does feel very different. Uh, and uh, one of them said there's a, a Japanese saying, which is uh, enough dust and you have a mountain, which I love because that kind of describes all of these little granular details, like I was saying on the right, the fact that they've upped the compression ratio, which means they have reprofiled the con rods and they've made the crank just a little bit heavier to balance that extra performance. Um, yeah, fascinating, fascinating stuff. So anyway, there it is. Um, I was trying to think of the, what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, yeah, the old bike, the noise, the exhaust noise. Now this is the other thing. The, uh, although Honda claimed this bike is two decibels louder than the old one, the old bike sounded louder. I rode them both without earplugs in just up the hill to see. And, and the old bike has a real kind of same exhaust, all standard, had a real bark to it. It was like ba, ba, ba. And when you quick shifted, you could almost hear, you could hear a little pop, a little backfire. You don't get that on this bike. And again, I said to the engineers, why is it louder, but it sounds quieter? And the, what they said was, there's more bass in the sound. Um, and of course, bass is not something you can always hear because some of it's like below human hearing, but it's very loud. It's always very loud. Um, so yeah, if you're in a band, they always tell the bass player to turn down. <laughs> so I don't know why. And uh, so yeah, so it, and I wondered maybe there was more induction noise from the intakes. Um, but no, they say that the, basically there's more bass throughout the bike and that's why it trips off the sound meter and is registered as a loud thing. Uh, anyway, right, so we've rabbited on about the bike. That's how I feel about it. It is a, it's a great, I mean, these wider, this wider fairing makes a huge difference as well. It's much more civilized behind the thing. Um, you sit, I, even though you're kind of canted more forward, you still sit in the bike, you're still well low, even on its highest setting, which is not, it's not a dramatically high screen. It's a bit wider. 
interesting, another little day detail. This is made from a new material, can't remember the name, Duplo? No, something like that, which, uh, which Honda claimed was plant-based polycarbonate. And I said to them, does that mean it's biodegradable? And they said, yeah, eventually. <laughs> so if you bury it in the ground for long enough. But anyway, it's a new type. Apparently it's more resistant to scratching, more resistant to weathering. Um, so new material for the screen. I mean, it doesn't look any different. It feels quite stiff and quite thick. It's not a floppy screen at all. Um, and so, yeah, the riding position is quite, and, and the, the, the weather protection, a little bit more comprehensive with this bike. Um, apart from that, it's still Africa Twin. I say, show of suspension, beautiful ride quality, really nice poise to the bike. Um, still got this multiplicity of switch gear over here, this huge um, blob of buttons. Again, you know, whatever, it is what it is. You navigate it or you don't. Is it a deal breaker when you buy the bike? I don't know. I'll tell you what is a pain. The screen still takes forever to come on when you turn the ignition key. Ah, oh, I get bored waiting. Half the time the screen goes blank and you think, oh, have I broken it? Is it not working? Anyway, um, still got USB port, still got 12 volt socket. Um, yeah, it uh, still doesn't come with a sh quick shifter standard, does come with heated grips. So let's get into the price then. 13.6, uh, sorry, 16, I wish it was 13.6, 16.3. It's not a misprint. Um, that's, uh, let me just check that actually, because that still sounds like a lot. It's 17.6 for the DCT bike. Yeah, 16.3 um, with a quick shifter and an extra 300 quid. It's got to be said, there are bikes that offer a similar level of specification. In fact, more. I'm thinking particularly, I mean, when you think of rivals to the bike, you do think of Tiger 900 GT Pro. A smaller engine, more horsepower, less torque, hasn't got semi-active, uh, but has got a 19-inch front. Um, and uh, similarly, sort of a fairly low seat height, 20 litre tank, not a 24 litre tank. Um, but no glow semi-active, but comes with the quick shifter, comes with cruise, comes with the traction control, the adjustable sheet, screen, the centre stand, heated seats. It's got heated seats as well as heated grips. Engine bars, fog lights, it's got the whole lot. And that's what, nearly 14 grand. So that's, that's a big chunk. This is 16.3. It's just, you know, if you're looking at rivals and the Triumph bike is nicely finished. It's not like say, uh, I'm not picking on it, but Suzuki's uh, uh, V-Strom 800DE, a fantastic bike. I mean, one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever ridden. Superb. But it's built to a price because it hasn't got cruise control. And when you look at it, you don't get the same feeling that you do with this or you do with the Tiger 900. But it costs less. You know, that's kind of one of the, I guess, one of the, the compromises. So anyway, the Tiger, yeah, is a bit of a problem for this. And then you look at other rivals for it. Um, the F900. I don't know if you pick the GS or the GSA, I'm not sure the GSA has got the bigger tank, but uh, it's, they've still got the 21 inch front, but even that makes more power than this with a smaller engine. Um, so that power issue, I don't notice the missing power on the road. I've never ridden one of these and thought, God, it feels gutless or I wish it had more go in it. Um, I mean, it is limited to, I think about 134 miles an hour top speed. So if you habitually ride at that kind of pace, maybe you wish that it wasn't restricted, but it's not being restricted by the amount of horsepower. It's just Honda turning it off at that point. So I don't know. Um, yeah, F900 still kind of a bit of an unknown quantity for me. Um, Suzuki's V-Strom 1050, they do the DE with the 21 inch front, but they also do the sort of the standard model with a 19 inch front. Now it's a cast wheel, not spokes, which I like the fact that this is spokes. Um, really good riding dynamic, very similar riding dynamic to this. In fact, it's even more compact, it's even more road based, I would say. Uh, and the rust styling is less overtly off-road on the standard V-Strom. Um, but in terms of price, again, it's, you know, it comes with a quick shifter, it comes with cruise, it's got traction control, it's got cornering ABS, and it's 13.2, you know, again, it's not 16.3. Um, and the only bike that kind of gets sort of, that I can think of off the top of my head that gets close to this is uh, the Ducati's uh, Multistrada V2S, which has got semi-active, makes a fair bit more power, 113 horsepower. Um, uh, not as much torque, obviously, because the engine's not as big. It's the 937cc V-twin, not a parallel twin. 19-inch front. You can get it on spoke wheels, I think. Well, I think the standard it's on cast, but I could be wrong. Uh, comes with a quick shifter, cruise control, traction control, cornering ABS. That's 16 grand, uh, a standard. And I think you have to add heated grips to that, which will begin will be another sort of 300 quid, I guess, maybe more. Um, so those two, that would make an interesting test from a price point of view, just to get the vibe between the two. Um, but then if you threw in something like the Tiger 900 uh, GT Pro, then that might be a bit of a curveball in terms of value for money. And then you get into the sports tourists because that's where this is going. You know, you know, you start getting into rivals for NT1100, its own sibling, um, which we could, can, you know, could be considered as a, a rival for it or Tracer 9 GT Plus, um, both of which are fairly comp. I mean, the Tracer is very comprehensively spec uh, for a really reasonable price, 14 something, I think it is. 
So anyway, I've rambled on enough. There's all the options. If I've forgotten anything, I've talked about the weight, I've talked about all the spec while we were riding, so I don't think I've missed anything out. Um, yeah, I mean, that's Honda's 2024 Africa Twin Adventure Sports. Looks gorgeous still, more road focused steering, handling, power delivery, I would say, is more road focused. Um, riding position, more road focused. Uh, and, and that's not damning at all. That's a good thing if you like riding your adventure bikes on the road. Um, so there we go. That's the Africa Twin. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to Bennett's Bike Social. Uh, check it out. Check out its sister channel, Front End Chatter, uh, Feck TV, over on a different YouTube place. Um, similar kind of content. And all that remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Smile for the camera. <laughs>